you probably already know that you should be doing user research and testing. No matter if you're a freelancer making complete websites for clients or an in-house designer or developer working on projects or even a manager overseeing those projects, every website will benefit from user testing. However, testing with users can often feel like a luxury that projects can't afford. It may seem like usability testing is too time consuming or too expensive to do, but this is an out of date perception. Today we're spoilt with choice in terms of the techniques and tools available to us for usability testing, and they're both fast and budget friendly. Just as a reminder, there are loads of reasons this style of testing is valuable. It provides direct input from real users interacting with your system. It uncovers areas of confusion, helping you improve the user interface. It can increase user satisfaction and loyalty by creating a product that meets the needs of users and is easy to use. It can ultimately reduce development time and costs by identifying issues earlier on. It can lead to increased sales and or use of your system. And finally, it can be invaluable in resolving disagreements about design direction, usability, and content. These things can quite literally make or break your project. The problem is you probably picture usability testing as enticing users into a room where you can sit them in a chair at a computer as somebody asks them to perform tasks while they write things down on a clipboard and nod a lot. To be fair, in-person testing can be a little bit like that and it is quite useful, but that's the kind that is slow and relatively difficult to do. This kind of traditional facilitated usability testing has significant drawbacks. Finding the right participants who match your target audience can be challenging, especially for niche projects or specialist fields. Doctors, for example, are notoriously difficult to recruit due to their busy schedules and patient confidentiality concerns. And arranging a time and a place to meet with participants for in-person testing is time-consuming and logistically complicated. Then there's setting up the usability lab, recruiting participants and compensating for their time, all of which can be expensive, especially for smaller projects or businesses with limited budget. And finally, traditional usability testing is a lengthy process. It takes time to set up and carry out a session and then to analyze the results and generate actionable insights. Fortunately, advances in remote testing tools and techniques have made usability testing a lot more accessible and efficient than ever before. Remote testing tools like Lookback or Maze have streamlined the process, making it easier than ever to conduct a usability test session without the need for in-person meetings. And this saves significant time and reduces the logistical challenges associated with traditional usability testing too. Facilitated testing takes the speed and efficiency of remote testing even further. In this method, users complete tasks using a prototype while speaking their thoughts out loud without a facilitator being present. And this approach is ideal for addressing whether users can successfully complete a specific action within an interface. By eliminating the need for a facilitator, unfacilitated testing allows you to gather insights from a large number of participants in a small amount of time. Tools like Maze also provide data insights, reducing the need to watch every session, and this makes analyzing results much quicker and easier. While unfacilitated usability testing is already a speedy option, there are other testing methods that are even faster and more budget-friendly. For example, first-click testing is a really efficient method for assessing whether users understand a static interface mockup and their ability to navigate it without the need for a complete prototype. This approach is ideal for quickly gathering initial reactions to a design concept before committing significant resources to developing an interactive prototype. The test is actually inspired by a notable usability study which reveals that users are significantly more likely to complete a task if they get their first click correct. Conducting a first click test is incredibly straightforward. Participants are shown a design and asked to indicate where they would click to accomplish a specific task. The test is often implemented as a survey that tracks and records where users click on a design, typically visualizing this data through a heat map to show common interaction points. An eight second test is another alternative, which gauges if users understand a page and notice critical elements like calls to action. The design is only shown to a user for eight seconds, as that's the average time somebody takes to assess a page. The user is then asked to list what they can remember about the page and what they felt the page was about. 
And this is perfect for quickly validating if your page layout, content hierarchy, and key messaging are effective. Then there's preference testing, which has users choose between different designs or compare your design to your competitors to validate your design direction. These tests are perfect for quickly validating design preferences and aesthetics, and they can also be used to resolve differences between stakeholders about the design direction. Then of course, the surveys, which can quickly answer many questions that you have during the design process. Common surveys include top task analysis that identifies what users want to know or do on a site and prioritize these tasks. It's an invaluable tool for determining the information or actions your user interface should emphasize. Or there's expectation surveys that uncover what users expect from a site in terms of content, functionality, and experience. And this can guide your design decisions to align with the user's needs and expectations. And then there are objection analysis surveys, which are used to identify reasons why users might not take a design action on the site, such as making a purchase or signing up for a service. And by understanding these objections, you can address them in your design and content to uh, increase conversion. And surveys like this can all be run using something like Polfish. Whatever tool you ultimately use for all these tests is gonna be lightweight and it's gonna be fast to run. And even with these speedy testing methods, you might still be concerned about the challenge of recruiting the right participants. However, this too is easier than you might expect. If you're testing usability, findability, or scannability, finding the exact audience doesn't really matter as much as you think. Because this type of testing is not looking at personal preferences or taste, testing with users who have a similar physical or cognitive ability is absolutely enough. In other words, in most cases, it's okay to test with anyone outside of your organization. For example, friends and family work well. You want to avoid using colleagues because they will have been institutionalized and will have the same mental model that is different from the ordinary user. Of course, nothing beats working with your real audience if you can. However, constantly asking people to participate in testing can prove annoying, and that's why many organizations are reluctant for you to contact their customers. To address this problem, consider building an opt-in customer feedback group that you can reach out to easily. To create an opt-in group, send out a single email to all your customers, asking them if they're willing to join a mailing list specifically for participating in user research. Once you've got this group, you can easily reach out to them whenever you need participants for testing without having to bother your entire customer base each time. If you do need to recruit participants that match your exact target audience, there are numerous tools out there that make the process faster and more affordable than you might think. Services like Askable or the built-in recruitment features of platforms like Listen or Maze allow you to define your desired participants by demographic and screening questions. You can often recruit participants for as little as a dollar per user and get results within an hour, depending on how specific your criteria are. With all this fast, cheap, and easy methods available to you, there's really no reason not to test your digital products with real users. Not only does user testing provide immense value, but it can also be a great tool for resolving internal debates and arguments about the design and content choices. So the next time you're tempted to skip user testing because it seems too difficult, remember all the quick and budget-friendly options that are at your disposable. Your users, and probably your team, will thank you.